Hey YouTube, it's Adrian. Just before we get you to this video, do me a favor and head over to pageantlaunch.com. We are starting the world's first dedicated pageant review site, and I would love for you to join our launch team. All you need to do is put in your email address. It's completely free. We are looking to make a pageant industry that is safe, transparent, and fair. I know it's like that most of the time, but over the last year, it's become very evident that it's not like that all of the time. So head over to pageantlaunch.com, put in your email address, and let's get you to this. I'm Chloe Lake. I am, or I was, Miss Galaxy Scotland 2018, and this is my interview with The Pageant Project. Hey everyone, it's Agent from the Pageant Project. I've got with me Miss Galaxy Scotland uh, 2018, Chloe Lake. Chloe, welcome to the show. Well, well, welcome to me. Thank you for having me, Adrian. <laughs> it's going well already. Oh, it's, we're off to a great start. It's 6 a.m. for me. What time is it for you, Chloe? It's like 7? It's just, yes, yeah, just seven, 10 past 7 ish. I've literally got in from work about half an hour ago. <sighs> Chloe has flown in through the door, fueled up on coffee. I've woken up, fueled up on coffee. Obviously, not enough, but in both our cases. Yeah. Um, and if you're wondering where I am, the answer is my car, because my home has power, but no internet. And that color that you're seeing on my face, which I'm just seeing now, that's because we've had really bad bushfires here in Sydney. And the sun, about five minutes ago, was actually blood red, because that's how much smoke is, is in the air. So I can't do anything about that color. That's kind of a. A cool backstory, but Chloe, let's yeah. let's get back to you. Um, let's start with the easy stuff. Can you give people an idea as to your pageant uh, pageantry background, where you got involved, um, the different ones you've done, etc., etc., etc. Yes. Um, so a lot of newbies to pageantry may know me over the past couple of years um, as Miss Galaxy Scotland and obviously my galaxy journey. But I've actually been com been competing. Um, it will actually be six years next year. Um, so I started off as a teen contestant. Um, I'd moved halfway down the country. I wanted to make new friends. I wanted to try something new, something different. So I entered um, a pageant called Face the Globe that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I did a couple of heats and didn't progress to the international final. But it's safe to say that the pageant bug, like, yep. it bit me and I was obsessed um, I spoke to someone that was competing in obviously Holly Perry's systems and mm. they mentioned Galaxy to me. Um, and obviously due to my mum being Scottish, I was eligible to compete for Miss Teen Galaxy Scotland. Um, so that was 2014 and then the finals wow. in 2015. Yep. So a long time ago now, um, I was blown away by Holly's system mm. and I actually placed second runner-up um, and I was so, so proud of myself. And I thought, right, you know, I, I think I'm, I'm getting there. I'm doing well. Yeah. Um, and then I entered Miss Teen Great Britain on the, um, on the word of Harriet Lane. She was like, no, you've got to do it. I'm going to do it. Let's do it together. Mm -hmm. Um, and I then placed first runner up in Miss Teen Great Britain. I then was like, do you know what? I want to go back next year. Um, this year is going to be my time and um, place first runner up again. So sadly it wasn't, <laughs> but do you know what? I, that, I think at that point in my pageant journey, that, that was where I learned a lot about myself. I had to take a big step back um, yeah. gain some perspective, re re kind of reconsider what was important and, and almost relearn my why, why am I competing? What do I want to gain? Um, and then I actually entered Miss Great Britain so not many people know this um, because it was quite short-lived, unfortunately. I was the reigning Miss Leicestershire Great Britain uh, 2017. And a week before the Miss Great Britain finals, I was actually taken into hospital with such severe tonsillitis that my throat was closing up. Um, Lovely. And yeah, not very nice at all. That's what you need before um, a pageant. I, I was absolutely heartbroken because you know, Miss Great Britain, I'd got to know Kate Solomons and Gemma who run the pageant. Their, their kind of office is based in Leicester where I live. So they were really accessible for me. And, and I was really excited because I just kind of 
refound my love for pageants. I was like, mm-hmm. yes, we're going to do this. And then I ended up attached to a drip in hospital. And sadly, it wasn't a drip <laughs> full of coffee. Um, <laughs> oh, be so lucky. So Kate was was absolutely brilliant. You know, she was calling my mum, making sure that I was okay. But the decision was made that, you know, even if I was out of hospital by the time the pageant started, I wouldn't be well enough to, to of kind of give it my all and do it how, how I do it best. Yeah. And, and then I, I kind of said to my mum, like, you know, this isn't the end. Like, I'm not done. I, I can't do this pageant, but I, I want to compete as a miss. I want my time. And mm. me and my mum had a, had a bit of an in-depth conversation about Galaxy. And we were kind of like, do you know what? I really enjoyed it when I did it the first time. And I'm, you know, I'm living competing again. So I entered Miss Galaxy Scotland. Um, I worked incredibly hard in the run-up. I worked with Rachel Tate. Um, I, you know, really invested a lot of myself into into my journey, but made sure that my main focus was on enjoying it. So sure. I didn't fall into the trap of being only in it for the crown. And then, do you know what? I had a completely different experience to the experiences that, that I had at Miss Teen Great Britain. I right. absolutely had a whale of a time. Um, I threw myself into the rehearsals. There's actually pictures of me um, where I'd broken a nail or thought I'd broken a nail in rehearsals and I'm sat there like, it's fine, I'm just going to smile through the pain. Um, and oh, God. Just the day just didn't, couldn't have gone any better. I walked into my interview and I was like, do you know what? This is me. This is who I am. We didn't even really discuss any pageanty topics Um with regards to appearances or fundraising, because I made sure that I wanted to leave the impression of the judges got to know Chloe Lake, not yeah. Chloe Lake pageant girl. Yeah. Um, and then my dreams came true that night. And um, when my name was called out as the winner and not the runner up, I, I broke down into floods of tears because I just thought, you know, this is my time. Mm-hmm. Um, this is what I've worked hard and been waiting for, for such a lot of years. And then when I was preparing for internationals, that was when I had my tonsil surgery operation. Um, so I was I was out of action for about a month and I was emailing Holly like, I'm so sorry, I promise I'm a good queen. I just can't actually get out of bed. Um, oh, but in, in the background, I was constantly, you know, researching um, watching the past videos of, of Galaxy Internationals and really looking at Maria's past queens and more mm. thinking, you know, how am I going to align myself with Galaxy? How am I going to kind of fit myself or or pick the best parts of me that, you know, align with the Galaxy system? And again, when we got out to America, I was just determined to have fun. Yeah. The whole time I was there, I don't think I was, you know, I wasn't really, I didn't even really feel like I was in competition mode as such. I just was like, this is my dream come true. Every activity, the white party, the pool shoot, the pajama party. I was just like, I can't believe I'm actually here. Um, and when I walked into my interview um, for Miss Galaxy International, um, I was waiting outside and then Ariana, Maria's daughter said, right, Miss Scotland. And I just took the biggest deep breath. And I just thought, it's now or never. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be myself and I'm going to do exactly what I did in the UK. And lo and behold, I ended up winning the interview. And I think it was because I put no no pressure on myself. I just thought, I want the judges to know me. I want them to think, that girl came in here. She was confident. She spoke to us as a person. She got to, you know, she had a conversation with us rather than we're having a panel interview, you're interviewing for your dream job. Because, mm. of course, that is the case. Yeah. But I think as a lasting impression, I wanted to be real. I wanted to be Chloe. And I think that worked out for me. And, you know, when Joanna was the winner, I got on with all of the girls in, in Team UK. But mm-hmm. I think taking my friendship with Joanna for from that week, like, that's the best thing that could have happened. I was over the moon when Joe won. Mm. Um, to even be called into the top five, I was like, that's it, made it. When yep. when I won interview, I was like, I'm happy now. But when Joanna won, I was like, yes, like this girl is amazing. She's Miss Galaxy. Um, and there's pictures of me and I, I feel like I'm almost in tears. I look like I'm Joanna's mum, proud in, in the background, like, <laughs> oh, that's my girl. Um, but yeah, I handed over my crown in March this year. And since then, um, I have been focusing on kind of imparting 
things that I've learned, I've researched over the years through um, my little venture chat with Chloe. Um, and I've, you know, I think I've been quite, quite successful. Some of my girls have been doing very, very well recently. And I think that's given me um, a sense of fulfillment that I don't need to compete anymore. I'd rather help girls get to yeah. achieve their dreams the way that I have yeah. been and I'm achieving my other dreams. Yeah, it's sort of come full circle. You're going all the way from teen, having your struggles, coming through to miss, having your time, and not being on the other side, so to speak. I mean, I'm sure you, you probably will catch interest again and, and go back in at some point. Um, at <laughs> well, least I, I keep joking. I keep yeah. joking that um, when Sam puts a ring on it, it's all it's over for you, misses. I'm coming back as a missus, but Sam's got to put a <laughs> ring on it first. So we've, we've got time. This is um you you are actually if my if memory serves you're the third person who on live interview with me has basically prompted their um their their partner to go um you know where where's my and this is not my middle finger to, to be clear you know where where where's the where's the ring and it's like oh that that's awkward but it's really really funny um I mean there's a lot that we can cover but let's go into the interview first um because I was just hearing you speak and I know that you own a law firm you're a lawyer by by day trade correct. Right. Um. Yeah. On sort your way. Of. I'm guessing. I'm on. My, I'm on my way. Okay. Yeah. And it's a long, long career path, as I understand it, at least here in Australia. But um, look, a lot of girls freak out about interview number one. And actually, Joanna is watching. She said Queen and lots of love of hearts. And she actually did her interview. She she doesn't like interview. When she came out of that interview at internationals, she came out and cried. Um. So a lot of girls dislike interview, and then they do training, um, but maybe the training's a bit too robotic. You know, they're told what to say, and they go into the interview, and it's basically memory dump. You seem confident, or you are confident speaking, but you also mentioned that you were able to show who you are, which is like yeah. next level. It's not just being confident and being able to answer the question well, it's also being able to answer it from my perspective in a way that shows the judges, as you said, who you are. So what are some of the tips that you have to get people to that stage? Ooh. See, for me, what I try and impart on girls that have training with me is mm. understand your why. So why are you competing? What do you want to gain out of this? And what does it mean to you? And I think once you know that and once you can be really, really honest with yourself, like, for example, there are some girls that just want to win. Mm. That is fine. That is absolutely fine. And that, you know, I can build on that. I can say, okay, you you really want to win. Let's take that down a notch. Why do you want to win so badly? What yeah. was, What's that going to mean to you? And I think when you understand the almost the mechanisms behind you competing, you can build on it. You can say, so I did 60 appearances, and this is showing that I've worked incredibly hard because this title has been my dream for five years. Um, but I think it's really, really difficult to be honest and to be real in an interview if you're not being real with yourself. Um, and there's girls that I've kind of mentored for, for big competitions like mm -hmm. Miss Teen Great Britain, yeah. um, where there's 60 odd girls and they're freaking out going, you know, interviews, the biggest, biggest um, kind of where the score comes from. It's 50% right. of the scoring in, in right, that okay, competition. Yep. And, and after a couple of sessions with me where I'm saying, stop stressing about the score. You, there's no, there's, you know, there's nothing to worry about as long as you, you really are being yourself. Mm -hmm. And there's been times where we've gone through practice questions and they're saying to me, I want to say this, but I'm not sure if it's right. I want to say this, but I'm not sure if it's right. And I think what I try and impart on, on anyone that I kind of help and I kind of mentor is there is no wrong answer. As silly as that sounds, if what you feel in your head is the correct answer or your answer to that question, then mm. say it. And then what I try and help with is how we can make that a little bit more concise. Um, because obviously you, in pageants interviews are timed. So what we yeah. don't want is to be waffling on and on and on. Um, yeah. We want to make sure that we get to the crux of the matter in the best way possible, but in your way possible. Um, yeah. So understand your why, understand your motivations, and don't be afraid of, of just being yourself. Um, don't think too much about whether something's right or wrong. There's been times in my interviews where, you know, someone might have listened and gone, why on earth has she said that? I would never have said that. 
but that's the point mm. because it's my interview. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I just want to dig into the in terms of giving an answer, not worrying about whether it's right or wrong, and that, that's a huge thing. And I think it improves with experience, obviously. A lot of girls worry about whether it's right or wrong from the perspective of um, is the answer that I give, or is that the answer that will give me the most marks? I don't know if you've ever questioned someone like this, but what if someone wants to give an answer that let's say may not be particularly popular? So, for Ooh. example, I've seen a few questions on stage about Donald Trump. And obviously, the question basically goes on the lines of would you do you support Donald Trump? And I haven't ever seen anyone say yes. But let's say, for example, that you wanted to say yes. That's not maybe, let's say, politically correct. What would you ask your, your client or your, your student in that case? Um, so I am quite a political person. Obviously, it comes by nature being involved in the law and being, mm. you know, quite academic. Um, and I have always kind of thought to myself, if a political question came up that maybe it's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, I would yeah. still be honest. I think as long as you have your own personal reasons, then that's fine. Now, let's just, you know, take a step aside. I am not saying that I am a Donald Trump loving, anything like that, because I'm, I'm very much the opposite. Sure. But I think, do you know what? There are people that support Donald Trump. And whilst I'm saying, mm -hmm. I'm not saying I agree with them, I think it's far better to be honest and let the judges know that, you know, if, if they select you as your winner, that's what they're going to get with you than to sit yeah. in, an, in an interview or on an onstage question and lie through your teeth. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you win the pageant and instead of a crown, you're donning a make America great again hat. Um, I think just yeah. be honest, just be real. Like you know, like like I, like I've said. I mean, I personally am quite left wing. Um, mm. So it, in the UK, we have our two main political parties, um, Conservative and Labour. I would say I am more on the side of Labour. That may be, you know, not the norm within pageants, um, but that's me. And if that came up in my interview, then I'd say, you know, I appreciate that. Whilst this isn't the view that everyone may share. It's my yep. view. I'm proud of where I'm com where I come from, and I'm proud of the political beliefs that I have that stem from my background. Um, so, whilst you may not understand that, that's me. And you know, if I'm able to share that with you, then that's fine. If if you're not in interested, then that's fine also. Yeah. Um, guys, I know there's a lot of you, and I promise I'll circle back to your questions. So, um, maybe put them in, in a few minutes when I ask you to, because otherwise, what happens is they scroll away to the top and I can't see them anymore. Um, but I, I do want to dig into the question of politics, because I mean, it's one of the things that, in polite, you're totally not supposed to talk about politics and religion and money. Those are the three things I talk about, them, which is why I wanted to talk about them, because it's fascinating when <laughs> anyone is willing to talk about them. I have noticed, because we have a lot of UK girls on my feed, that politics is really. A lot a lot of the younger generation, and I say younger loosely, like let's say anyone under the age of 30, is really begin. They, they seem to be beginning to post a lot about politics. Um, not necessarily their opinion, but they're even just sharing um, examples of politicians from all around the world. And I think this is really interesting because I, I'm someone who's been interested in politics when I was younger. But I think with a few of the things that have happened, for example, Donald Trump being voted in yeah. Brexit, I think a lot of the younger generation are beginning to realize they need to take an interest in politics, yeah. which I think is great. Um, in terms of your interest in politics, can you say where where it stems from and what you think about young people needing to actually get involved in politics and know what's going on? Um, so if my mum's still watching this, she's probably sat downstairs laughing to herself now. She knows what I'm about to say. So my interest in politics um, predominantly came from my mum. Um, she worked in the civil service, so in a government department when I was growing up. And she was heavily involved in the trade unions. Mm -hmm. um, so representing people if they had a dispute at work. Um, yep. It's a it's, you know, an alternative to go into a solicitor. Mm -hmm. And so I saw a lot of what she was doing and, and started asking questions. I've always been really, really inquisitive. That's yeah. probably why I'm, I'm going to be a lawyer, because I like to ask questions and I like to get them answered. <laughs> yeah. um, and then when I was studying, um, I did one of my qualifications, um, GCSEs in this country. So that's what you do when you're 16, um, was 
in history and a, a large basis of that was was political history and then right. when I went to do uh went to sixth form college and did my A levels I did government and politics there and obviously with an interest in law um since I was 16 years old I've known that I've wanted to be um, a lawyer it kind of comes with the territory and then mm -hmm. I think when you grow up and you age a bit and you start to see more of the world around you, you start to, you know, read the news, listen to the news, you you then develop your own opinions. My opinions, you know, sometimes they differ greatly from my mum's. Yep. Um, and they some of them they differ from my friends as well. But I think that it's I think it's amazing now that younger people are looking and 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 taking a stand and using their voice to say, I agree with yeah. this or I don't agree with this. I yeah. think especially with things like Donald Trump um, come into power. I watched that election all night. I'd um, just mm. gone to university and actually some of the pubs in Leicester were showing um, the yeah. election footage because there were so many people that were so interested. And I think yeah. that, you know, 10 years ago, if someone had said that the, you know, the most powerful man in the world would be Donald Trump, we'd have all turned around and gone, are you having a laugh, mate? I don't think so. Yeah. That reality um, TV show. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And I think, again, with Brexit, it's a thing that is so important. It's so divisive, but it gets the conversation going that you can't help but stop and take notice. You can't help but listen. Mm. Um, and I think that that's happening now, especially in our country. Um, it's happening in schools. It's happening in colleges. So it is inviting younger people to to start to develop their opinions a little bit earlier yeah. so that when they get to, to vote in age, they're, you know, watching the news, they're deciding, do I agree with this party? They're asking their parents what their views are and why. Yeah. And I think, yes, that's not just happening um, in, in our country, but I think it's happening around the world. And Definitely. I, for one, I'm like the biggest advocate for it because at the end of the day, we are now the generation that are going to be living through this, that are going to be seeing the results of Brexit, the results of Trump being in power, um, unfortunately, as yourself, Adrian, uh, seeing the really, really negative results of, of climate change, mm. these are all things that we're going to be living through. And, and actually, we do have the power to change. We just need to channel that in the right way. Yeah, it, it's, um, I mean, well said. I mean, it, it's, it's really shining through now um, with people like uh, Greta Thunberg, for example, or I think she was 40, 14, I don't remember, she's very, very young. And that sort of impact and calling world leaders out and a lot of them not knowing how to respond and you've kind of got, not to sound, you know, but a, a lot of politicians still, at least in Australia, it's very much, much old men, old white man syndrome. And yeah. I really like the fact that that's sort of been chained up and um, the leaders actually need to say what they're standing for and what they've done versus just giving a lot of rhetoric. The young people can see straight through that because they've grown oh. up in oh, media. Yeah. So they know when you're using the BS. I, I know there's this video, for example, I don't know if you've seen it, of the New Zealand uh, Prime Minister, uh, Jacinda Ardern. And no matter what you think of her politically, she did this video and it was very real. You can tell it wasn't, it wasn't coming to her. Uh, one of her people gave her like, a two-minute challenge, just list all the achievements she's had in the last two years. In power. And so many people are sharing that. I think, A, because, yes, she's a woman, but, B, these are real achievements. For example, when they had a gun yeah. massacre, a uh, gun violence um, a massacre in New Zealand, I think it was within 24 hours she outlawed, she changed the gun rules yeah. within that yeah. period of time. And the young people jumped on that because that's a huge issue of violence against women and children. As you mentioned the the environmental, the climate change, and all this. Um, do you, do you think there's any particular reason why the younger generation is getting so involved in politics? Do you think we've just seen one too many disasters? Maybe. Maybe, but I think um, as cringe as it sounds, and I hate using this word, I think almost showing an interest is becoming cool. It's becoming a bit more socially acceptable right. because I think when my mum and dad's generation were growing up. Um, you didn't discuss politics openly or particularly my, you know, my grandparents, it wasn't the done thing. It was, yeah, you know, you don't ask about to. politics, exactly. you don't talk about politics. Whereas now it's the complete opposite. I mean, you know, I see on my social media all the time, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, people that I've grown up with engaging in, you know, sometimes friendly, sometimes mm. a little bit unfriendly oh. debate. Yeah. Um, so I think the, like the socially, 
it's it's more socially accepted now to discuss it and i think that's why more young people are getting involved because it's not just oh you know you support this hush hush or you support that oh you can't talk about that um and i think as well you see a lot um of celebrities using their voice for example in the uk we have a grime artist called stormzy um last week it was obviously the deadline for us to register to vote in in this country for the next election and he decided to take to his instagram and use that platform to advocate young people especially registering to vote yes he decided to promote a particular politician and a particular party but i think the fact that the you know celebrities famous people are using social media to advocate for politics full stop and yeah. um, that's a change as well and i think yeah. you know more younger more more of the younger generation are going to listen are going to see that and are going to think okay you know this is something that i clearly need to listen to and i need mm. to take heed of yeah, that, that, that was a massive change that I, I noticed uh, when Trump was, in, in the lead up to the Trump election, a lot of celebrities got on the um, yeah. Hillary Clinton bandwagon, they literally did ads um, where it was just celebrities saying, basically, vote for Clinton, vote for Clinton, vote for Clinton. Um, okay, so I, don't, I think it's the first time I've talked about politics, but I was just, re- at least in a live interview, but I was really feeling it. I think it's very pertinent at this stage. Um, just just before we get to the Facebook questions, so because if you have any uh, questions for Chloe, put them in now. Uh, just before I circle around the motion reactive pageant a, a little bit, or, or Chloe in particular. Um, so, Chloe, can you tell us what you do it's outside of the pageantry, just in day to day? Give us an insight. What, what keeps you busy? Do you have any hobbies in your time? I don't know. <laughs> well, give us an insight like oh. behind, the, behind the lawyer, behind the pageant queen, what, what goes on? So do I have time to have hobbies? Um, well, no, to put it bluntly. Okay. Uh, so I'm outside of, pageants, um, <laughs> outside of pageants, I'm a law student. And for um, since July this year until at least August next year, I am currently working um, for one of the best law firms in the region. Um, they're called Wilson Brown Solicitors. So we have Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter and Facebook. Um, but no, I work in property law and that was actually my first interview for any kind of legal job. And I treated it like it was a pageant interview. My boss didn't know that at the time. You didn't walk I in, like, in there... did, you, did, you, did you, I mean, oh, you didn't oh, walk in course. pageant and stuff with the crown on your head. <laughs> Oh, I did the full hair flip and everything. No. <laughs> um, but the, the attitude I gave my, my job interview was, I'm treating this exactly like a pageant interview, and it works. Um, yeah. So I've been there for nearly five months. Um, since there, I've been involved in lots of different things. So I used, again, my pageant skills, helped one of my colleagues plan um, a big winter ball last month. Mm-hmm. Um I've been networking, social media all of that. Um, outside of that, I'm just a normal 22 year old. I have a boyfriend that lives three hours away from me. So if I'm not at work, chances are I'm in my car um, driving up north um, to see him and my family because that's where I'm originally from. And I love to shop. I think if I had a hobby, it'd be shopping (laughs) um, or as boring as it sounds, reading. That's really geeky to admit on a live interview, but I love books and I love to read. Um, And also, I am a massive Leicester City Football Club fan. Um, I'm a bit of a hooligan. So the pageant persona, the lawyer persona goes absolutely out the window when I'm at the football match. Um, I sound like a bit of a hooligan, a bit of a man. And my my grandma (laughs) would not be impressed by my language. But, you know, when we're at the football games and anything goes um but that's something that i've always always enjoyed and it's definitely it's something that i can do with my dad because yeah. my dad's like a normal blokey bloke he comes yeah. to pageants to support me and watch me but he's not about really to tell me the on. difference yeah. he's sure, not about but... to tell me the difference between a sherry hill and a giovanni um yeah. so our thing is is, is less lesser city football club and and right. i love that Okay, look, first off, there is nothing wrong with reading. I think more people should read and broaden their education. Secondly, I was in Cardiff when the World Cup was on for rugby, and I, so I know very well exactly how crazy <laughs> you guys go. Uh, and this is coming from an Australian. Uh, I don't know if there's anyone who's crazy about rugby. I don't know what it's like for football, but rugby, it's just like you can't go anywhere. Every pub was people leaking out to the out to the front and they're obviously oh, they're yeah. slightly inebriated and you just everyone gets involved but i mean it looks great it brings the whole whole
whole city together. I mean, if you win, if you, I guess you'll commiserate together, but same thing. Oh, it does. Like, for so Leicester, um, I'm, I'm very surprised if you've not actually heard of Leicester City because we defeated all odds um, a couple of years ago when we won the Premier League here in the UK. So that's the, the top flight mm-hmm. division football because we are a small club. Um, you know, we're not the big boys like Manchester United. Everyone's yeah. heard of Man U. Yeah. Um, defeated all odds, we were a bit of an underdog. And since then, you know, it's brought our city together. So I definitely see what you mean. Like, it, it brings a place together. We, mm-hmm. we celebrate together. We commiserate together. And we, we get behind our boys, really. Have you ever heard that, that old piece of wisdom that when it comes to supporting team sports, there's an unusual phenomenon of we won. If, it, if you win, it's we won. Wait. But if the team loses, it's they lost. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's we won, they lost. <laughs> oh yeah, but, um, I mean, in in our house, it's it's definitely we won or or we lost because I think when my dad and my brother go and watch the matches, we definitely know if they won or they lost by the, the mood that they come home in. And me and my mum are like, oh, they could have been a good team today. Um, oh, so I think no. in in my house, definitely we won and we lost. <laughs> But it's definitely part of the DNA of your house up there. Okay. So, guys, I'm circling around finally to the Facebook comments. Sorry, I normally do it more often, but on my laptop, I can only see one thing at a time. So, uh, Joanna Johnson has said, All oh, I love you, and she's crying again. Um, Joanna's always crying. Uh, Rachel has said, Chats with Chloe is the best. I would never have one person interview a TNGB without Chloe's support. She doesn't love you, Chloe. Aww. Lovely Rachel, and obviously Joanna before as well. Jo knows I love her. Well, you're, you're the three psychs together, along with Lauren, oh, who's oh. okay. So Lauren has said underneath, that's my bestie, with, you know, emoji with love hearts. That's my bestie too. Um, I'm trying to get the next comments. Give me a sec. My, my, my laptop is going, no, not on a, not on Tuesday morning. Okay. Uh, Joanna has said, Chloe, have your pain. Um, I mean, we'll do we'll do a fair swap because I can't do my hair without Joanna. So if Joanna gives me her hairdressing skills, I will I will loan her my brain. That is fine. We can do oh, that. I'm, I'm remembering back when I interviewed Lauren and Lauren. I asked between the two of you because I think I generally put which one's your favorite, and she said I needed my hair done. Obviously, no. If I was basically thrown in jail. I think as a three, we complement each other, and we we are very good. I think we've got all bases covered. What what's, uh, what what purpose does Lauren serve? Lauren is the most entertaining person I've ever met in my entire life, and also if I needed someone to you know hype me up and back me up, I'd go to Lauren. And also, right. I'm okay. I'm trying to I'm trying to organise myself and Sam to get to Thailand, but only when Lauren's there as well, so she can show me around Thailand. So she's got to be okay. the cool. She's going to be the cool auntie to my kids that um, lives halfway <laughs> that lives halfway across the world and only flies home for special occasions, bringing wine with her. When, when you say she's entertaining, is this intentionally entertaining or unintentionally entertaining? Because there's a big difference. So I think Lauren's just one of these people that doesn't have to try. Um, so- <laughs> I. I don't I don't think that I'm like a funny person. So if I have if I'm in a situation where I feel like I've got something funny to say, then I'll try to get it out. Whereas I think Lauren just doesn't have to try. She is just the most entertaining person ever. And to be fair, Lauren brings me out of my shell quite a lot. Um right. she kind of bolsters me up a little bit and, and gives me a bit more confidence. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me go to these comments. Um, now, Ethlu Merritt has asked to help with uh, help her with interview. So, Ethel, I think the best thing to well, actually, Chloe. So, I won't put words in your mouth. So, if someone wants interview training, um, what's the best way to get in touch with you? Um, via email or messages. Now. Sometimes I go through stages where I'll get a million messages a day, so it's very hard to keep track of. Um, but sure. at the moment. I am currently arranging my diaries because I've got some girls, you know, Olivia McPike, Bethany Blissett, um, who are all gearing up towards Galaxy in the mm. 
in the in the kind of the winter spring um yep. so i have got space in my diary and yeah let's get filling them so just give me a message and give me an email yeah good luck good luck with olivia i'm sure you can understand her. <laughs> <laughs> do you know do you know what i am half scottish so unlike some people i can understand a scottish accent i can or i'd try very very hard to <laughs> I was just listening to some of our last podcast. Just again, I was trying to imitate Olivia. I don't know why I can't help myself. It's like a hobby that I have is imitating Olivia McPike's accent. I was trying to imitate certain parts, and she speaks so I couldn't even keep up in my normal accent. So, um, I might need to get her to slow down. But I said that I was able to understand her, so maybe it's a good thing. She can get more into one minute than most people can in, in five. Exactly, exactly. That's always a good thing. But obviously, oh. you can't talk too fast. But if you can, you know, if you, you you can speed it up a tiny little bit, then it means that you're making the most out of that time. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, she half joked said she could put on an English accent so that people could understand it. It may not actually be the worst idea, frankly, that I've ever heard. Uh, no, no fake accent. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, she does a good English accent, though. It's weird. Um, Leah Wright has said Chloe helped Emily and her interview was so much better than ever before with an ex. Uh, now, if you heard us how much you charge Chloe, so I think that's probably better. Um, email or message Chloe and then check into the pricing structure there. Uh, yeah. so there's a lot of stuff, Chloe. Lynn, Lynn, or your mum has said that she has first dibs or brains. It's really worrying. It's like a bunch of zombies and they all want your brain. No. My, see, my mum can't because she knows that I need to be really successful so that I can fund her retirement. That's the plan. That is the plan. <laughs> Sorry, mum. It's got to stay where it's put for your benefit and your benefit only. It's still going on. Joanna has said, ha, 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 we can all share it. Um... Lynn, your mum has said there's plenty of it for all of us. This is really worrying. But they're talking about your brain here. Sounds like you're going to have to wake you, you shouldn't fall asleep. They're going to, you know, um, take you to surgery when you're sleeping and take your brain to share it. The, you know, the worst thing is we're obviously all going to Miss World together in a few weeks. So I think I'm going to have to book myself a separate hotel, full mm. stop, make sure there's sharp objects around and, and oh. kind of think about having a security guard on my door. Oh, protect the see. brain up. Yep. Get, get, get a bodyguard. Uh, uh, Lauren has said, be respectful to everyone's beliefs and po political views. I think a good judge will be delegate has their own views. That's very true. Um, I, I was thinking more along the lines of girls being comfortable to voice views that might be unpopular um, with the audience or, or with social. Uh, Lynn has said, all my fault. This is going to be I'm not sure what you was talking about there. Uh, okay, let me go. I'm going to see if I can find your question. Okay, so Laura has, what is your one pet peeve within pageantry? Um, ooh, ooh. Negativity on social media is my absolute, I really don't like it. We've all been there after a loss. We've all been there when we thought, this has not gone my way. I've worked hard. Why haven't I won? But vent at home, vent on text to your friends, vent to your mum and dad leave it out of social media. I yeah. think as a community, we get enough stick. We get enough, you know, press from perhaps the um, press. Uber, Uber, Uber. Yeah, from the, the Uber, Uber, Uber feminists that can't yeah. understand that actually pageantry is very feminist by nature, mm. um, that, that give us enough rubbish for, for doing what we do. We don't need to bring it on ourselves. Um, yeah. And I see a lot of it. I also, I think I said this on the last pageants and PJs, people that air their dirty laundry on Facebook, no, no. Mm. I, being a past queen, I have a lot of people that I know of, but I don't necessarily know personally enough to read some of the things that, the, you know, they may put on Facebook in, in like a blind rage or something like that. And I'm kind yep. of like, oh. I now feel really awkward that I know all this about you, but I have probably met you once in my life. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 those are my, I think social media, negative, social media negatives, definitely my pet peeve. Yeah. 
that that's been my last sort of 24 48 hours um without really having internet and power someone ref someone said there was this big thing going on in uk pageantry and some i'm not going to mention names but some queen had her title removed and someone referred me I, i'm not friends with her i was looking at the rant oh. that she went on and i was like i can see where you're coming oh. from but just no like i mean yeah. there, there is this argument with freedom of speech and that's an argument for another day. I do find it fascinating the division between freedom of speech and having tact, especially as a pageant queen. It's not, you know, you're not a, a radio shock jock. You you are supposed yeah. to be a role model. So I understand this whole thing. I need to be perfect. I need to say the right thing. But where's my? I do understand it. But yeah, I agree with you. It's like not don't don't do it on social. Don't don't air the dirty laundry. Yeah. That that no one likes that. You, you you know you've hit the nail on the head there. I. I'm very vocal. Um, mm. Like I said, I'm, I'm very politically minded, politically aware. But obviously, when I was a reigning winner, I also understood the kind of standard that I needed to adhere to. Mm. So I would voice those opinions where it was appropriate to voice them. I wouldn't necessarily, you know, do that on Facebook. And I think, yeah. you know, every every woman, um, you know, of, of a coherent kind of age you know we're, we're talking mm. older teenagers up to the misses um understands what they're signing up for when they sign up to enter a pageant and on the off chance that they may win they mm. know what they're you know they know what what they're getting yeah. involved with and i think yeah. that level of respect needs to be there you know you you sign a contract there are rules you adhere to those rules of course um that, you know, there's ways and means. I engage in debate when I'm at uni. It's fine. I don't need to post it all over my Facebook. Some people do, apparently. I mean, I will say well, there's a difference between airing your dirty laundry and having an opinion. Um, yeah. And I think it's very oh, yeah. important how you state your opinion as well. Uh, these are all things that I think would be fascinating to delve into. But for, for the sake of I don't that's think what, we can... That's one for another day. We yeah, could be here all night. Cram, cram that into to like... 20 20 or, 30 or even an hour. Um, Rachel Loss has asked, if you could go back in time and meet yourself first pageant, what would you want to tell yourself? Do you know what? If I would just tell... Uh, do you know what? I think I would just sit and watch because all of the mistakes that I've made, all of the learning curves that I've been on, as cringe and as cliche as it sounds, have brought me to this exact spot today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, not winning trying and trying and trying and come in third then second then second again then not being able to compete <laughs> yeah. has built me up to being this woman that you know i i think i have a lot to give and yeah. i'm able to give that because of the the journey that i've been on it's helped me professionally it's helped me academically so i think i'd actually just sit back and watch mm, and okay. i'd love to watch it over again watch myself make the mistake watch mm -hmm. myself have that light bulb moment and fall back in love with pageantry because yeah. ever since then, you know, life's just been on the up. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, going back to the brain thing, Lynn Lake, is, uh, your mum has said that actually is the plan. So, okay, I think you definitely need a bodyguard. Uh, your dad has said, Chloe is right, I have no idea who makes what dress, but if I did, I wouldn't be the walking wallet. Not, I'm not sure what that means. Oh, so dad thinks, Dad thinks that he is a walking wallet. Um, this isn't true. This isn't true. I have, I've, I've always worked since I was able to work. My dad is not a walking wallet. Um, but no, he he he's my football buddy. That's what he is. Right. Okay. Uh, your mum has asked, how do you feel about the change in the UK in recent years? Oh, sorry. The would you be able to say that again, Adrian? Yep, sure. Uh, your mum has asked, "How do you feel UK pageantry has changed in recent years?" Oh gosh. Um. Obviously, to you know, to be obvious, it's gotten bigger. Um. Mm -hmm. Which I think comes with both positives and negatives, as as everything does. Um. It's great to see that there are so many newbies at different pageants. Um, it was strange. So I actually worked for Holly at Miss Teen Great Britain this year on the, on the junior day. And some of the girls right. didn't know that I was a past winner of Holly's. And I was like, oh, am I really? That old news. You know, I handed over my crown. Yes, that's news. Ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's cruel. Um, but yeah, I think there's, it's difficult to say. I think I've noticed a lot more that perhaps 
you know, there are negative things on Facebook and things like that a lot. Mm. But then, you know, you could argue that and say, well, that's because there's more people involved that you see yeah. it more frequently. Yeah. I think the growth, you know, it, it's not a bad thing. I, you know, I'd love for pageantry to be as big in this country as it is in some places over the world, because I can't thank it enough for what it's done for me. And I see that from my friends, from girls that I follow, the things that it's, it's been able to do for them. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it's definitely grown. And I think with that, you know, it, it, it comes with perhaps things get put on Facebook more frequently. The competitions yeah. are harder. It's tougher. But at the same time, that's going to increase the standard. We're going to be sending, you know, better girls to, to these competitions because everyone's got yeah. to step it up. And, yeah. and that's not a bad thing. No. I think personal UK pageantry is in a very interesting position. I think what you just outlined is somewhat growing pains. I think it means something's going to change. That's that's a good yeah. thing. I think pageantry stays relevant, but obviously with um, your good friend Harriet Lane doing so well overseas, I think that's going to potentially inspire a lot of the younger Amazing. generation to go into it. So I think UK pageantry is very, very well placed in terms of what's like, I don't know what we'll have in the next, you know, let's say 12 months, 24 months, but I think it's a super interesting time to be involved with UK pedigree, whether as a contestant or as a parent or as a coach or three. Um, Lauren, Lauren is us. If you're involved in pedigree, where do you think you would be? If I didn't get involved in pageantry, where would I be? Well, I would have graduated, but I don't think I'd have had very much going for me um i'll be very very honest i i i am i am who i am today because of pageants i'm able to walk into a room full of people that are at the top of their game professionally and i can work that room i know how to handle myself i know what to say how to say it um and also how to 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 kind of make them feel like hmm, that's chloe lake i want to know a little bit more about her and yeah. I wouldn't have been able to do that if it wasn't for pageants. You know, I went to Myanmar last year um, to support Lauren, and I am the biggest wimp when it comes to spicy food, exotic food, <laughs> exotic places. Yeah. You know, hand me a burger and chips and I'm fine. And I was sat in, you know, in the street restaurants, eating with chopsticks, kind of going, oh, my God, this is so spicy, but at the same time, it's mm. so delicious. And even little things like that, that's the kind of thing that pageantry has done for me. It's taken me out of my comfort yeah. zone in so many different ways. And I think that, you know, yeah, I, I would have gotten a, a great degree, but would I have all of these other things that I can offer alongside mm. that? No. So would I be on track to achieve my dream job? Probably not. Um, and I think as, you know, the biggest example of what pageantry has done for me, it's definitely that. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm on route to being... To, to achieve in everything that I've ever wanted. And that's because of pageants. It's because I'm, I'm so confident now. I'm so comfortable in myself and who I am and what I bring to the table. And the only way that that's the only way that that's happened for me is, is because I've competed in pageants. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, just, just with chopsticks. How am I with chopsticks? So I am actually learning Mandarin Chinese. Um, I'm, I'm struggling to get to grips with it, but in, in my in my, in my Mandarin Chinese class a couple of weeks ago, there was an activity with chopsticks. It's safe to say that I am nowhere near as good with chopsticks as I was when I was in Myanmar when I was having to use them every single day because I was kind of trying my hardest and there was people in my class that were absolute pros. And the teacher actually gave me the baby chopsticks instead of the normal <laughs> chopsticks because I was that bad. So let's not talk about the chopsticks. Just a quick clue from someone who's been using chopsticks his entire life. The easiest, the, the easiest thing, the, the bottom chopstick does not move and you hold the top chopstick like you would a pen. Um, yes. And don't hold them too high up. The higher up you hold them, the, the harder it is. But a lot of people try to remove both chopsticks or move them sideways like like crab claws. It's not the bottom one doesn't move and the top and it just rests on your middle finger and the top one you hold like a pencil with those three fingers and it's like writing. That, that, that's the tip. I need to practice to see how good ones go to you guys. If you think you're good with chopsticks, see if you can a P. Like just like one P. See if you can pick up one P with chopstick or if you're better than that, see if you can pick up an ice cube. Because there's 
almost impossible okay. to do pick up an ice cube with a cup of chopsticks. I'm going to get myself some chopsticks at home and I'm going to practice because, do you know what? I felt like I'd learned a new skill when I was in Myanmar and evidently it's just gone out the window <laughs> a little bit. So I need, need to up my game with my chopsticks. Uh, Kasima, Mitchell, what advice would you Go for it. Um, as silly as that sounds, you will never know unless you try. Um, mm. Take the plunge. If you want to invest a little bit more, if you think, do you know what? Yes, I'm going to enter, but I want to enter and I want to kind of place. I want to win. I want to, you know, be the girls that are the face of the competition. Then have a little look at training, self-development, um, watch YouTube videos, talk to people that know what they're yeah. doing. But you will never know unless you do it. And if I'd have, you know, entered, if I could, in fact, if I could tell my younger self one thing, it would be to do it so much quicker than I did. Hmm. If you said, if you're younger, I mean, you're not old than you do. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I'm younger day. It's the only funny to say, God, we go back like a couple of years. You're teenagers. You take like a few Life is fleeting. Life is fleeting. My next big birthday is my 30th birthday. So life definitely is fleeting. Um, but to be, like, I entered pageants um, when I was 16. And, and now I see girls that are 14, 15 years mm -hmm. old. And, and they are so eloquent, so articulate, so confident. And I was never like that at that age. So I think that's, yeah. if, you know, if I could tell myself to do something, it would be to have entered a pageant at that age. Uh, okay, we'll take one more question, and then we'll go to the final one. Uh, final one from Lauren. Do you think everyone should get pageant training? Do I think everyone should get pageant training? Mm. That is, not to blow my own trumpet, everyone should, you know, chat with chloe no i'm joking i think if you want to take it seriously and if you want to set your game up then the way to do that is through some kind of training that mm. may not be with a qualified coach that may be just sitting and watching hours and hours of youtube videos in a dance studio and modeling yourself on on what you're seeing videoing mm. yourself thinking how can i do that better I mean, one thing that I always tell my girls is to, you know, when it gets closer to the pageant, the pageant day, I'm like, sit with your mum and dad, get them to ask you questions. The only way that you're going to improve is, is with practice. Yeah. So I think, you know, if, if you want to be the girls that are winning, that are the Harriet Lanes of the world, you know, Harriet has had training back in the day. Mm. She went to Indonesia to develop herself more and more. I think, yes. If you want to step your game up, if you want to be the girls that are flying all around the world, representing, you know, England, Scotland, Wales, Great Britain, the UK, then yeah. yes. But it doesn't necessarily have to be with a coach. Training yeah. can be in, you know, all sorts of different things. And I think as well, now that I have started to help girls and mentor girls, I will never call myself a coach because I am mm. not qualified. Right. I like to think what I'm doing is mentoring people, is helping mm -hmm. people. There are so many different trainers that don't have these formal qualifications but have decades of experience. Have a look at and see what they can bring to the table. Perhaps, you know, Maria Torres comes over. She's from America. She mm -hmm. sees a different side to pageants that we have over here. See what you can learn from her. Look at the past queens. I mean, if I wanted someone to help me with my walk, I'd go to Lauren because, I mean... Mm -hmm. Jesus, we've all seen her. But again, no formal qualifi uh, coaching qualifications or training qualifications. She just has something that she can share with yep. someone else. Yep. Um, I mean, obviously, you know Lauren well. When, when she's just walking normally, does, can she walk normally? Or, or like a human? Or does she always walk queen style? I, I have a problem. I can't imagine Lauren just slumming it along going to the supermarket. Does she walk normally? I think every pageant girl doesn't walk like a, a normal human being. Sometimes I catch myself when I'm when I'm at work walking around the office and I'm, you know, my shoulders are back, my head's high. But I think that's because it's not just down to the walk. I think it's yeah. down to the, the confidence. So yeah. I, I don't think any of us, I don't think any pageant girl in the history of pageants, since they started competing, goes back to having a normal... I'm walking around town, going to the yeah. shops, I'm keeping my head down. No, we're all about the, I'm here, 
the world is my runway kind of life. I, ju I just have this image of you walking along in the hallways of your law firm and then every now and then just busting out a, a spin or going around the corner and working a turn into it. I, I just... <laughs> do, you know, do you know what? Oh, don't tell me you actually have done. No, sometimes I think to myself, because we have some, you know, a couple of really quite long corridors that I'm thinking, <laughs> get myself into a strip here. I could, you know, do a little spin here, but maybe not. Maybe not. I, I think if I was going into a law firm, and I've been to one, unfortunately, I say unfortunately because it costs an arm and a leg, um, but if I saw my, my would-be solicitor or lawyer strutting along the, the hallway and suddenly busting out a spin, I'd be like, yeah, yeah, that makes me feel better. It's actually a human being. She's not just a lawyer. So I don't know. It, it might work. Do you know what? I feel like I need to create a personal brand. I need to be like the sassy solicitor. And, and my future clients, when I'm at the top of my game, I will, instead of just walking up to them and shaking their hands, I'm going to have to, you know, nice to meet you. I, mean, I would say maybe don't do it in a courtroom. But, I mean, no. outside of that. <laughs> but do, do you know what? We've all seen Legally Blonde. We've all yeah. seen Elwood. I am, do you know what? I, I'm Bruna Elwood. I've even got the tiny dog. So maybe okay. in the courtroom as well. You, you do know that Legally Blonde is a Hollywood movie. It's not real, though, right? I mean, <laughs> I know, but I hate I to break dream. it to you guys, but I, I can dream. It's <laughs> not like I've modeled, you know, my entire six years of of being a law student on being Elwood. Not at all. Absolutely not at all. <laughs> Okay, um, just before we go to the final 10, um, is there anyone that you want to give a shout out to for supporting you along your pageant journey and just life in general as well? Um, obviously mum, um, but with mum comes my other mum, Louise, um, yeah. and all my tens of thousands of pageant mums that I've, I've gained along the way. But it has yeah. to be said, especially over the last couple of years, you, it's got to go to my psychos um, because they are the ones that not only are gearing me up within pageants, but they're the ones that if I have exciting news at work, I tell them first. And, and we just, I think we just have this like unbreakable friendship of like, we will be friends for the rest of our lives, whether it's pageants, whether it's work, school, hairdressing, traveling across the world to Thailand. Mm -hmm. Um, we all support each other, whatever we do. Um, and the next has to go to obviously, Sam, my lovely boyfriend, that had better still be watching this, otherwise there'll be trouble. <laughs> um, so he, we've actually known each other for almost eight years. Um, he, it's a bit of a childhood sweetheart story. Um, but he came back into my life when I was um, working towards Miss Galaxy Scotland and took absolutely everything in his stride um, to the point now that like he has his own friendship with Lauren and Joe and a lot of other pageant girls as well. And I think that's really special that he's been able to support me um, no matter what, what I'm doing. And then obviously you've got to look at people like Holly Pirri. Um, she, without her, I, I wouldn't be me. I wouldn't be where I am today doing what I'm doing today. And, you know, she has changed so many young women's yeah. lives, yeah. not just her queens, because yeah. she had changed my life before I'd even won. And, you know, there are, there are hundreds of girls, people like Harriet Lane. I was at lunch with her at the weekend and, and her mm. family. These are friends that have become family and have become, you know, my pageant family. I wouldn't be Chloe without all of the influences that these, these women and, and their families have, have had on me. So. I just, you just reminded me that you, I've collected all three psychos now. as interviews. You have. So I think... Um, girls, I think you'll agree we we can make Adrian uh, a fourth honorary psycho. I think that's it now. You've collected us all. We're like Pokemon. You know, I when you initially said that, it was like, oh, that would be an honor. And then I thought about it, and it's like, I don't think I can deal. Like, I'm, <laughs> I don't, the stuff that you guys would chat about, I'd be like, oh my, oh my god. And <laughs> this is too much. I'm out, guys. I can't cope. I'm out. I'm out. We're not that bad. We can actually be really positive people sometimes. Oh, I'm not sometimes. talking about positive or negative. I'm sure you're positive. It's just sometimes, you know, when, when girls get really excited about something and a guy just, his response is either, eh, or, uh, or, you know, something like, it's, it's monosyllabic. Yeah. It's yes or no, but girls can have a hundred messages about it. And I'm like, oh my God, I, I, I just, I just can't. Um, 
but yeah, I mean, it'd be honorary psycho. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'll take that over an honorary doctor, doctorate any day. Okay, um, final 10. So your turn to be put on the spot, as it were. But they're not, like, everyone knows what they are, so no one's on the spot. Question one, what is your favourite word? Hmm. Fantastic. I say that a lot when I'm at work. I'm, I'm, I'm on the phone to a client and I'm like, that's fantastic. Great, fantastic. I need to find a new word. Well, that's the first time I think someone said fantastic. A lot of people say fabulous. That seems to be a UK thing, the fabulous, that whole fabulous thing. So fantastic yeah, is actually different. Oh, well, what about number two? What is your least favourite word? Uh, No. I don't deal well with no. I am a yes girl. Um, I kind of go after what I want, and the answer always has to be yes, because if it's no, then I get very sad. Mum, Dad, Sam, probably Lauren and Joe, Louise, probably have all seen me when no has been uttered. It's it's not pretty sad. It's, it's not cool. Do you really get sad, or do you just start arguing? I have a hard time thinking that, believing that you just get sad and you leave it at that. Yeah, definitely not get sad and leave it at, at, yeah. at that. At, at, yeah, the, the arguments happen. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I figured as much. I mean, you're a lawyer, for God's sake. I mean, if you're not arguing when you get a no, what's wrong with you? And that's why I'm going to make an amazing lawyer or a fantastic lawyer, because I never take <laughs> no for an answer. Uh, okay, uh, question three. In life, what gets you excited or what turns you on? Um setting a goal and achieving it so especially over the last few years all I do is I kind of make myself a little to-do list and I, I work and everything that I do is is to maybe to that one goal to that one goal yeah. and and when I kind of tick things off my list I'm like yes but then on to the next one yep yep I can certainly sympathize with that question four what turns you off as difficult as it sounds um I put a lot of pressure on myself and so if I feel like I am underperforming or if I've let myself down then it's it's very much kind of what goes on in here if I feel like oh Chloe what's going on then I get really down on myself. Mm -hmm. Question five what sound or noise do you love? Um my little dog when she's asleep and she has these little snores and it's adorable and I'm just like oh I love you so much Pippa what's her name she's called Pippa after Pippa Middleton or just Pippa just Pippa right what sound does she make it's just like these tiny little sniffles like and and it's just oh, it's just so cute and it also means that she's asleep and not causing any trouble because right. oh, she she is crazy. Okay. <laughs> what sound or noise do you hate? My alarm. Oh, I think <laughs> I think the day that I retire and I don't have to I don't have to listen to my iPhone alarm any longer. I think I'll probably still wake up and have some kind of PTSD over the sound because <laughs> it just. Oh, it sets my teeth on edge. No. Give me five what, more minutes in bed. What alarm sound do you have? Because my iPhone woke me up this morning and I was about to throw it out the window. What what what, what alarm chime do you have? It's, it's like the standard iPhone one. I actually think right. that it's on the advert for the new iPhone. And even right. that advert, I'm like, no, change the channel, get it off. Uh, I, I, I hate the sound of the alarm. Um... This is so much that I've lost my train of thought. Question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick and why? To read minds, because when I am a qualified lawyer, it would give me the advantage because they would be thinking about what they were about to say and I'd already know it and be able to argue back. Very, very interesting. Uh, question eight. If you could have any one occupation other than your own, what would you most like to attempt? See, I'd love to say a singer, but I am absolutely tone deaf. Are you um, sure? Oh, gosh. I can't sing at all. Um, if Louise Parkinson is, is watching this and, and Lauren, etc., they've all heard me sing. It's, it's not a pretty sight. I think Louise has got a really embarrassing video of me singing, and I am tone <laughs> deaf. So if, I, if okay. I could do something, I'd love to be able to sing. I'd love to be the next Beyonce, but it's just not going to happen. 
here, here's a question for you. I mean, out of the pageant girls that, that you sort of know, who's the best singer? Because so many of them protest they can't sing, and obviously sometimes it's true. But is there anyone that's actually like a real standout singer? Oh, my goodness me, Stephanie Hill. Oh, of course. Oh, she's actually a singer. She, yep, yep, yep. She, yeah, she, she is actually a singer. Um, but, yeah, wow. Okay, just wow. I have to, I just have to get her... Get, I have to listen to some of her singing. Um, okay, question nine. What job or occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? A politician. That's, this is why I'm going to be a lawyer, because I can implement the law. Um, I think being a politician, as, as much as I love politics, it is mm. the hardest job in the world, because you can't please everyone. Um, yeah. And I like to try and please yeah. everyone. You don't and want I to be a politician I, then. I, I tie myself up in knots. And I, do you know what? I'm far too honest as well, because some politicians really aren't. Um, yeah. I can't lie. My face gives me away every time. <laughs> okay. Well, what sort of face? What, what are we talking about? Do you have I, a twitch? I, or? I, I just can't lie. It's like I, I go red. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm looking all <laughs> over the face. I, I, I can't do it. I, ju- okay. I think it's always helped me growing up because my mum and dad would know exactly when I wasn't telling the truth and then I'd right. get into more trouble. So right. I just kind of realised it's best to tell the truth. And now I, I, I can't lie. Well, it's a good skill to really suck at then. <laughs> Final question. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Congratulations, you've made everyone proud. I think, like, the the biggest thing for me, um, I'm very, very driven, and I want to make something of myself, mostly to make, like, my family proud of me. You know, I come from a very, very normal working-class family, and my parents, grandparents, other family members have all had to sacrifice and and work incredibly hard to help me get to where I am today. And I think the best way that I can thank them is to do myself justice and to carry on, you know, accomplishing beyond my wildest dreams so that they can see that it's not all in vain. And, and, you know, if, you know, hopefully by, by the time I am at the top of my game, uh, my, my game my mum and dad are still around so that I can yeah. physically say thank you to them yeah. but I think the best way I can you know thank my family members and the people that have support me is 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 just to keep on excelling and to to make their sacrifices worth it yeah you're certainly very driven you might be the most driven pageant <laughs> pageant competitor I've ever interviewed in terms of, especially in terms of your career driven by coffee <laughs> fueled by coffee um in terms of putting you on the spot how do you feel about lawyer jokes because obviously there are a lot of them do you know what i love them um i actually follow a meme page on instagram called <laughs> legal cheek and i'm forever <laughs> like i um Kirsty, who i work with i'm forever like look look at this this is really funny or i find this really funny no one else might find this funny um but i'm like sat here laughing away to myself have you heard Give it? me all the memes and the lawyer jokes, I've, uh, uh, all of them, just all of them. Have you heard any good ones recently or any ones that come to memory? I always like a good lawyer joke. Unfortunately not, because they're mostly about, um, There's there's been some about Kim Kardashian, um, about how, you know, she may be having the same struggles as little old Chloe Lake in Leicester. Um, but yeah, if you want lawyer jokes, you've got to follow Legal Cheek on Instagram. It's good. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just going to circle back to comments one more time. Um, speaking of Kirsty, Kirsty Mitchell has said, I can, I can confirm that she does spin in the office. Um, Sam, time. On a good day. Sam has said, of course I am. So he is still watching. Uh, Lauren has said, girly ran. Lauren has also, if Sam says no, he gets locked under the stairs. <laughs> 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 not, e- not even locked under the stairs. He gets to go in Pippa's bed. Like he, he would be in the bad books if he was not watching. Yeah, your dad has said, "Ask Chloe how to spell no." She will say, "Why yes." That's true. I knew the whole thing. Like you wouldn't get sad. I knew you'd just start arguing. 
Um, Sam, has oh, said, Sam has said he can also vouch for the scene. Yeah, I, I think I've given everyone of like my close friends and family at least one headache in their lives from my singing. Because, you know, I'm, <laughs> I, I, I try with confidence, just really, really, really badly. Yeah, th there are some things that are just the genetic lottery, and some people can sing, and some people can't, unfortunately. You can train it, but yeah, something to be said for talent. Uh, yeah. Harriet Lane has said, we already are so proud of you, and your dad has said, or, or does that mean no care home for me and mum then? Yeah, so it's, I think it's been an ongoing joke since I was about nine years old, and I heard an advert on the radio for a care home in the northeast called Ormsby Grange. And from then on, I've always said, Mum and Dad, when I can afford to pay for you to be in a care home, you go into Ormsby Grange Care Home. So this is, you know, this is why I, I've got to be a successful lawyer not not to buy myself the handbags, not to go on the nice holidays, to to put my mum and dad in in Ormsby Grange Care Home. <laughs> <laughs> the, I, I assume it's a nice tone. I mean, because otherwise that just sounds really. I don't really... even know. <laughs> I, do you know what? I don't even know. It's just. It, Maybe it's just you should check it out because... first. <laughs> it's become family folklore now, so that's they have no choice in the matter. Because it just sounds really quite bad if you say, "Yeah, Chloe, I know Chloe. She works really hard, so that she can afford to put her parents in a home." <laughs> <laughs> I love them. I, I love my mum and dad to bits, but they—they're already aware of this fact. You know, it's been going on for thirteen years now. Right. So, uh, Chloe, roughly how long do they have before you can afford to put them in the home? Are we talking five years, ten years, twenty years? A long, 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 long time. Hopefully, my dad's my dad's saying that you know he wants to live to a hundred so he can get a birthday card from whoever is in charge of the royal family at that time. Um, so that's fifty years from now. Sorry, 51. Right. Right. I'll, I'll get told after that. He's only 49. He's not 50 till yet. Next year. So 51 <laughs> years. Okay. Uh, perfect. Well, I think that'll do it. So, Chloe, thanks so much for your time. Thank you very much for having me. And congratulations on achieving all of the three psychos. I know. And you're interview number 80 as well. So you're a nice round number. A milestone again. Yeah, milestone after milestone after milestone. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'll keep you on the line for just a second for watching, uh, seeing your messages and questions. Uh, Chloe, I will say probably after this, go back through all our messages for you. That'd be nice to go back that, through. Well, that would be absolutely lovely, and I'd just like to obviously whilst we're still on, just thank everyone for their lovely words. It really does mean a lot to me. Perfect. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We will speak. Hey guys, it's Adrian again. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and remember to head over to pageantlaunch.com and join the launch team for our pageant review site. All you need to do is put in your email address. Thanks and uh, speak to you next time.